Hello and welcome to our English Easy Practice channel. In this video, we'll be sharing some fun and engaging conversations to help you improve your English skills. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced learner, listening to and repeating these conversations will help you build your vocabulary, improve your pronunciation, and boost your confidence when speaking English. And remember, repetition is key. So be sure to watch this video multiple times and practice saying the phrases out loud. Let's get started. Hey, Emma. Can you explain the concept of black holes to me? Sure, Alex. So imagine a vacuum cleaner that's so strong it can suck up anything, even light. Wait, what? A vacuum cleaner that can suck up light? Yes, that's how strong the gravitational pull of a black hole is. It's so strong that nothing can escape from it, not even light. Okay, that's insane. So if I were to fall into a black hole, what would happen? Well, you would experience something called spaghettification. As you get closer to the black hole, the gravitational pull would become stronger and stronger, stretching your body out like a piece of spaghetti. What? That's terrifying. Yeah, that's why we don't get too close to black holes. But they're also really fascinating because they can tell us a lot about the universe and how it works. That's true. So, can we never escape from a black hole? No, once you're in a black hole, you're stuck there forever. But don't worry, the chances of you falling into one are pretty low. Whew, that's a relief. Thanks for explaining that to me, Emma. Anytime, Alex. Just remember, always stay away from black holes and vacuum cleaners with really strong suction power. Hello, are you enjoying the story? Please give us a like, thank you. Hey Mark, have you heard about the latest environmental initiative? No, what is it? Well, some people are trying to live a zero-waste lifestyle. Zero-waste? What does that mean? It means they try to produce as little waste as possible by reducing, reusing, and recycling everything. That sounds interesting, but how do they do it? They bring their own reusable bags, containers, and water bottles. They also compost their food waste and buy in bulk to avoid packaging. Wow, that's a lot of effort. I don't think I could do that. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's worth it for the environment. I guess you're right, but what about all the waste we've already produced? How can we deal with that? Well, we can start by properly disposing of it and recycling as much as possible. 
We can also support companies that use eco-friendly materials and packaging. Good point. But what about all the plastic that's already out there? We can try to reduce our use of single-use plastic and support efforts to clean up the oceans and beaches. That makes sense. But what if we can't live a zero-waste lifestyle? Does that mean we're bad for the environment? No, of course not. Every little bit helps, and it's important to do what we can. That's true. I'll try to be more mindful of my waste and support eco-friendly initiatives. Great. Let's start by bringing our own reusable bags to the grocery store. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. And maybe we can wear matching eco-friendly t-shirts while we're at it. <laughs> That's a great idea. We'll be the most fashionable environmentalist around. <laughs> yeah, we'll be the envy of all the trees. Speaking of trees, did you know that deforestation is a major environmental issue? Yeah, I've heard about that. It's terrible for the environment. Exactly. Trees absorb carbon dioxide and provide oxygen, so we need to protect them. But how can we do that? Well, we can support sustainable forestry practices and buy products made from sustainably sourced wood. That sounds like a lot of work, but it's worth it for the environment. Absolutely. We only have one planet, so we need to take care of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Elon Musk has a backup planet yet. Exactly. Let's do our part to keep this one healthy and thriving. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button to receive more like it in the future. Hey, have either of you been to the Eiffel Tower in Paris? Yes, I have. It's a must-see attraction in Paris. Really? I thought it was just a giant metal tower. Well, it's a giant metal tower, but it's also an iconic symbol of Paris and an engineering marvel. Plus, the views from the top are amazing. Hmm. I don't know. I'm more of a beach person myself. My favorite place to go is the beach in Bali. Oh, I've always wanted to go to Bali. What's so great about it? Well, the beaches are beautiful, the weather is perfect, and the food is delicious. Plus, there are so many activities to do like surfing, snorkeling, and yoga. That sounds nice, but I prefer to be in the mountains. My favorite place to visit is the Swiss Alps. Oh, wow. That must be breathtaking. It is. The air is so clean and fresh, and the scenery is stunning. Plus, there are plenty of outdoor activities to do, like skiing, hiking, and mountain climbing. <laughs> You two are so different. One likes the beach, and the other likes the mountains. What about me? I like both. <laughs> well, that's good. Then you can visit the Eiffel Tower, go to Bali for the beach, 
and then visit Switzerland for the mountains. That's quite the itinerary. I'm going to need a lot of sunscreen and hiking boots. Yes, and maybe a French dictionary, too. Don't worry, Lena. We'll teach you some French phrases on the way to the Eiffel Tower. And I'll teach you some Balinese words, too. It sounds like a fun adventure. We'll have to start planning soon. Agreed. And who knows? Maybe we'll discover some new favorite places along the way. Sarah, I'm so nervous about this presentation on the Industrial Revolution. What if I don't know enough about it? Mike, don't worry. You've done the research. You know what you're talking about. I just don't want to bore everyone to death. <laughs> well, that would certainly be ironic considering the Industrial Revolution was all about bringing things to life. But seriously, Mike, you'll do great. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. I just wish I could make it more interesting. I get it. Why don't we try something? Let's pretend we're living during the Industrial Revolution. You're a factory worker, and I'm a factory owner. Okay, what do I do? Get to work, you lazy bum. We need those widgets manufactured. What? I don't even know what a widget is. Exactly. That's the point. The Industrial Revolution was all about mass production and factory work. But you could always rebel and start a labor union. I don't think that would go over too well with my professor. Probably not. But you could also talk about some of the inventions that came out of the Industrial Revolution. Like the steam engine, the telephone, or the light bulb. That's a good idea. Maybe I could even do a dramatic reenactment of Edison inventing the light bulb. Yes. And don't forget to say Eureka when you finally get to work. Thanks, Sarah. You always know how to make me feel better. Of course, Mike. Just remember to have fun with it. And if all else fails, just dress up as a Victorian factory worker and start singing, I will survive. <laughs> I think I'll stick with the light bulb reenactment. But thanks for the suggestion. Has anyone ever traveled to Asia? I have. I traveled to Japan in 2019, and last summer I visited Thailand. Very nice. How did you acclimate yourself to the culture there? What advice would you give to another Westerner who was trying to visit different Asian cultures? Well, first of all, almost everyone understands some level of English. People from Asia have usually received some sort of English language instruction, sometime during their public or private schooling. Oh, wow. So unlike in America, where students don't normally learn a foreign language until secondary school, many students in Asia learn English as part of their school curriculum starting younger? Exactly. English language instruction starts much younger, often in elementary school. That's interesting. So, do you still need a translator? There is a lot of English used in bigger cities, of course. 
So if you're afraid of having a language barrier, you'll have an easier time finding English signage or someone who understands English than it would be for someone from an Asian country to find their language represented in a Western country. You'll definitely still want to know the basics of the language spoken wherever you visit. Or have a way to translate. But you can also definitely get around in the bigger cities with little to no knowledge of the local spoken tongue. That's good to know. Asian cultures also tend to have a higher level of nonverbal communication. While Westerners might use mostly verbal communication, some Asian cultures rely more heavily on body language, gestures, and facial expressions to interact. This can be helpful when you don't know a lot of the language. How else would you say Asian and Western cultures compare to one another? Well, they are both definitely full of their own diversity. There are several common religions in Asian countries like Buddhism, Islam, and Hinduism. While there are many people who practice those and other religions in North America, Christianity is the most common. Thanks for sharing these valuable pieces of information. We will continue next time. I really wonder how you will compare these different cultures. Of course, I have lots of things to tell you. Hey, have you seen the latest iPhone? It's got all these new features like face recognition and augmented reality. Oh yeah, I saw that. But have you heard of the new smart toaster? Smart toaster? What's so smart about it? Well, it has a built-in touchscreen that lets you select the type of bread you're toasting and how toasted you want it. Plus, it has a camera that takes a picture of your toast and posts it on Instagram. What? That's ridiculous! Who needs to take a picture of their toast? I don't know. Apparently, it's a thing now. People like to show off their perfectly toasted bread. Okay, but why would you need a touchscreen on a toaster? Isn't a knob or a button enough? Well, it's all about convenience. You can control it from your phone or your watch, so you don't even have to be in the kitchen. But isn't the whole point of making toast to have a quick and easy breakfast? If you have to spend five minutes selecting options on a touchscreen, you might as well make a full breakfast. I see your point. But the convenience factor is still there. And besides, it's just cool to have a high-tech toaster. I guess that's true, but I think I'll stick to my old-fashioned toaster for now. Suit yourself, but don't come crying to me when your toast isn't perfectly toasted and Instagram-worthy. Oh no, what will I do without my Insta-toast? Exactly. You'll just have to settle for plain old toast like a caveman. Well, I guess I'll just have to live with that. At least I won't have to spend a fortune on a fancy toaster. Fair enough. But if you change your mind, I know a guy who can get you a good deal on a smart toaster. Hey, can I ask you a question? Sure, what's up? I am thinking about going on a cruise for spring break, but I wanted to get your opinion. You have been on a lot of cruises, right? Oh, yes. Cruises are one of my favorite ways to take a vacation. 
What locations are you looking at? Well, I definitely want to go somewhere warm, but it doesn't have to be tropical. <laughs> so Antarctica is out of the question? Not for this one. I really need some sand and sunshine after all this snow we have been getting. I did go on a cruise to Alaska once, and it was a really good time. We had great whale watching, but you really had to bundle up. So that's definitely not the one for you. You can go to lots of warm places on a cruise ship. Yeah, I was thinking about the Caribbean or maybe the Bahamas. I want to be able to spend a day or two at the beach. That's what I really love about cruises, the excursions. You can choose just to get off the boat and walk around for the day or pick from a list of local activities. What is your favorite cruise destination? Definitely the Caribbean. Most cruise lines have their own private island, which is definitely the most relaxing excursion day. Sometimes you can still get on and off the ship as you please, but they have restaurants and activities that are included in your cruise price on their island. Wow, I did not know about any of that. Speaking of food, is it really that good? I have watched a couple of YouTube videos about food on cruises, and some of them look amazing. You need to check out the restaurants for the different cruise lines and see what is included or extra charge. I have loved almost every meal I have ever had on an all-inclusive cruise. But one time I paid extra for a meal at a specialty restaurant that accepted reservations only, and it was well worth the extra cost. Thanks for sharing your experiences with me. You really helped me a lot. Sure thing. Enjoy your vacation. Hey, can I get your opinion on something? Sure. What's up? I just wrote this article about why cats are better than dogs, and I was hoping you could read it and give me some feedback. Oh, my friend, you're really asking for it now. You do know that I'm a dog person, right? Yes, but I'm sure you can appreciate a good argument in favor of cats. I suppose that's true. All right, let me take a look. So, what do you think? Well, I have to say, I think you're completely wrong. What? How could you say that? Cats are clearly superior in every way. Clearly superior? Have you even tried taking a cat for a walk? Or getting one to fetch a ball? And don't even get me started on the whole litter box situation. Okay, okay, I'll admit the dogs are more trainable. But cats are still better companions. They're more independent. And they're just as affectionate as dogs, if not more. I don't know about that. Whenever I go to my friend's house with their cat, it always just ignores me and does its own thing. And have you ever tried to give a cat a bath? It's like wrestling with a greased pig. <laughs> I'll give you that one. But you have to admit that cats are much cleaner than dogs. They don't slobber all over everything, and they groom themselves. That's true. I'll give you that. But at least when a dog licks you, you know it's because they love you. 
When a cat licks you, it's because they're plotting your demise. Hey, that's not fair. Cats can be just as loving as dogs. All right, all right. I'll admit that both cats and dogs have their pros and cons. But in the end, I'll always be a dog person. And I'll always be a cat person. I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. Fair enough. And who knows? Maybe one day we'll both get a pet that will surprise us and change our minds. Listen to the lessons repeatedly to think in English and automatic speaking. Repetition is very, very important to become fluent. You need to speak English fluently without translating in your head. The words should come out of your mouth automatically. So, this is where the repetition comes in. If you repeat the same vocabulary and sentences many times, you will become a master of this vocabulary and grammar. So, you will be able to use that words automatically, without thinking about grammar rules and without translating vocabulary in your head. In order to think in English, you must repeat vocabulary and sentences as much as you can. After lots of repetition, Eventually, you will start to think English in your head and improve your speaking skills. You can practice English whenever and wherever you want. Just listen to our short stories and answer the easy question out loud. You will improve your listening and speaking skills fast.